Hey, Nikeshwa. Yeah, good good evening and good morning. Other part of the world. Yes, yes, yes. Good no. evening and good morning. Oh, nice to see you. Good evening, Nikeshwa. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Uh, Mario Karunati. Good afternoon to you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you during COVID time. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks for that. <laughs> okay, so shall we start? Yes. yes. Right. So um so uh let me start then. So my name is Warakan from from uh, from Bangkok, Thailand and uh my co-moderator today is uh Dr. Nikeshwar um, Rao Kuneti. Uh honestly, uh it's my honor, you know, to to be with him today because this is a session about VSD closure with Kona MF Akuda. So if uh, for those of you uh the Kona actually uh, is abbreviation of his uh you know uh, Koneti. So um again um uh today going to be a very exciting uh, session definitely because now we are with the person who really invented this device and um yeah and also uh experts around the world will share uh, with us uh how do they use this device uh, in the real um uh, circumstances. So um so please um join us um it will be two hour session um and also uh, very importantly uh thanks for the uh, live tech company because um that company i mean live tech uh, now developing the program so the the live tech comprehensive congenital intervention development program lccp so that would be uh um the the reason that we are here together uh you know sharing the session online um and again i'm so exciting also because this is the first time i moderate a session um yeah so hopefully that uh, you guys enjoy so um let me uh start with uh, the first speaker then um as you may aware of uh, you know his um uh, dr nakeshwara rao kuneti again just uh, um to introduce that he is the one who invent um actually the uh this um uh, multifunctional device so uh please uh, if um, nakeshwara can join us and also uh share with us the quest for a better device kona mf occluder please nakeshwar it is really my great honor and pleasure that uh, uh, dr varakan from uh, bangkok is introducing me in the presence of uh, dr mario karunati he is a father of uh, interventional cardiologist to be honest with me he trained a lot of uh, teachers he is teacher to teachers and we have from argentina uh, Uh, dr uh, jesus demes and he is there from malaysia all these people it is really my great honor to be here and this is uh, one of the photographs where varakan and myself were seriously listening in uh, one of the international conference uh, these are my disclosures uh, today that uh, all are under uh, patent pending and also i am associated with the relaysis uh, to do doing neonatal stent ke i would like to thank my mentor Uh, dr raghav raju uh, actually from 2003 onwards he was insisting me to be uh, a part of the pediatric interventional cardiologist and to develop innovative things in the difficult complex areas like fetal and neonatal and he actually forced me to embark on to the bst device closure with his help i actually performed a lot of innovative procedures and then finally the outcome is conor uh, mf he himself called me and actually suggested the name to the company because they were struggling for more than 6 months time so these are all devices which are available in the market uh, and uh, people used to perform vst closures and transcatheter closure using advo 1 2 eccentric and uh, muscular devices but uh, the difficulties of congenital and structural defects are many because of the small babies complex anatomies and the defect is various nature and course based on the patient to patient so if you look at only the transcatheter closure of vst you can form the av loop you have a difficulty retrograde method in the infants you need to have bigger sheath whereas in case of infants with the transeptal puncture the sheath delivery systems are not appropriate and transcatheter closure of vst came into picture from 1990s 
and then subsequently large data came which includes uh, from european and usa but the problem is that there is a large incidence of a complete hard block came this is a paper from lee benson and european registry you can see uh, one of the uh, author is mario carnetti in that uh, they mentioned that the uh, the major concern is the occurrence of complete hard block therefore very careful monitoring of rhythm is mandatory so if you look at the anatomy various things the vst the bundle uh, his bundle and the left bundle travels inferior to the ventricular septum uh, ventricular septal defect in the membranous location so it is highly vulnerable for the uh, complete hard block and also data which showed that there is a significant oversizing fabric reaction shear stress clamping force inflammatory reaction all this contributed to significantly to the heart block so various studies various methods which we actually performed in vitro proven that there is a significant stress caused by the device leading to the complete heart block <laughs> and other congenital uh, heart structural problems like a tortuous circuits and rupture of sinus valves and uh, all these needs some kind of a device a successful procedure should be simple reproducible and safe that is very very important so we worked on that we understood various problems with this structural problems in terms of heart block cores delivery systems and then we were thinking for the solution with that solution it happened that i had to meet this engineer called mr jack from life tech that time amplifier was not there and sold to sendude and there was no research going on in any other industry except in life tech and so we came with an idea of incremental rise in the dimension uh, and which has got a cone shape so that it can go and adjust as per the requirement of the membrane septum or various anatomical structures so uh, uh, we actually first developed a first prototype that was in uh, 2013 early then subsequently we understood that without membrane larger defects it can cause hemolysis and residual leak we came with the membrane and then we tested aggressively reduced the uh, the wire diameter to go through the four fringe system four fringe system so that you can use to the uh, infant so this final product is a low to medium profile and which has got a major hemodynamic advantage as per its shape and we did lot of in vitro studies which is shown that the devices without membrane larger defects more than 86 uh, showed that significant uh, uh, residual leak and hemolysis that's why we actually put the membrane so uh, we have actually brought this device in 2015 and we uh, actually uh, worked with the indonesian group and other people they have actually implanted in humans after some experiment and my as i told you my mentor who actually suggested the name to the company that's how the name of kona remf came there is nothing secret in that so we have done studies uh, using kona remf and other devices my colleagues uh, thanks to dr daljit kaur and narsimhan dr narsimhan electrophysiologist we actually mapped the uh, conduction system before and after the devices we found various uh, abnormalities that's why we actually come to the conclusion that a low, low profile devices are useful i am going to share you some cases this is a large defect in a child of 8 years more than 2 is to 1 left to right hand and this is a part of the electrophysiological study that's why you can see lot of uh, electrodes are there so this we closed using the 1210 kona remf device here effectively forming the av loop similarly you have another case example this girl actually uh, high pvr more than uh, uh, five good in it so we have actually closed these defects are going from the transeptal approach because there was a foramen well in this uh, child and we closed actually two large defects and left at two small residual defects so it acted like a pop up and we recently catheterized and found the pulmonary artery pressures are normal and pvr is less than 3 that's a quite encouraging when you have multiple defects and leaving a small residual defect residual uh, 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 hole uh, for the pop up is a good 
idea we found in that case this is a 7 years child who underwent pa banning for the multiple vsts in a drv normal related situation sajjan felt that it's a difficult to uh, close all the defects so that's why we have to actually close using the conor mf and retrograde method here you can see the retrograde method and all defects are closed and the child went to surgery so this is another case of a 4.5 kg 7 months baby with a moderate restrictive ap window and then we have to put the uh, uh, the conor mf using a 75 device this is another four four uh, another four year child with the coronary ap fistula effectively being closed and this is the case which i want to discuss and then probably i'll go to conclusion thanks to my colleague dr shweta and seen was murthy this is a 25 days infant with the meconium aspiration syndrome and the large vst and we have to close crossing from the right ventricular side and child did the extremely well and there was a heart failure followed by the device closure due to diastolic dysfunction and improved with uh, uh, carvilol therapy these umbilical avm another indications in a neonate we had to close effectively using the conor mf device here and child improved very well i am going to last slide conclusion paravalla leak is another indication iatrogenic shunt is another indication these are all various indications for the uh, using the conor uh, mf so i would like to show my uh, uh, experience of 55 uh, ventricular septal defects of perimembranous of 44 muscular vsts of various showed that excellent result and 95% successful rate this is the world data which is available at this point of time to summarize the new conor mf appears to be useful in many situations the medium profile property of the device and its hemodynamic adjustment are additional advantages to prevent heart block however i feel long time results and institutional experience from mario calnetti and other germany group and north america argentina are important to study the potential advantages as well as disadvantages of the device so there is a way to do it uh, better you find a good uh, uh, good method and do the case that's what my closing remarks thank you very much thank you varakan and other panelists and i am closing with this slide very good thank you thank you um um nageshwar um so maybe just one question if uh, any of you may have if not then just one question nageshwar in in case that i have some ideas so how come you get connect to the uh, the company i mean what is um, like let's say if you have young people want to get some idea with a company to share with them how, how can you start with that yeah this is a very important uh, point uh, dr varakan if you have idea you cannot disclose just like that and present anywhere you first write it on the paper document it mm. and first you do a process called the pct once you mm. do pct then you can actually approach the company with a nda non disclosure agreement mm. either you can do nda first or do pcta doesn't matter if mm. you do nda then you can actually open your idea if they like the idea you have to work it together if they don't like the idea then probably you have to think about a different uh, uh, company or different scientist which you can uh, he can help you so that's what the very important information which you asked thank you i also learned over the period of time I, mm. it did not strike me actually somebody guided me i also learned over the period of time thank you thank for sharing um so i would like to also um uh, introduce our professor damski jesus damski uh from um um bonus ires um argentina so what what um he would like to uh Sharon could ask will be his great experience on uh, using the VSD closure with MFO device uh, experience in Argentina if i understand correctly actually his case uh, firstly start uh, late of the december uh, 2017 so um, my pleasure please uh, uh, professor damski if you can uh, share with us hey thank you thank you for the invitation um, okay but my disclosures uh, 
Our protocol, we, talk, uh, we think always about a patient above and under 10 kilograms. Uh, above 10 kilograms, we close 28 patients the similar genders in female and male. The median uh, age was uh, 6.5 years and the median weight were 20 kilograms. Uh, the QPQS, the mean was 1.6, the small 1.3. We had three patients, uh, one of them with endocarditis, and two of them with uh, enlargement of the left ventricular echo and hyperflow in, uh, in the chest. Uh, so uh, the mean, this is the mean of the pulmonary pressure. Uh, the most important BSDs that we close with uh, were the perimembranous BSD, but we had two uh, post-surgical with the body disease. <clears throat> the, the lost orifice mean was, uh, the mean was 8.5, and the right orifice mean was, was uh, 4.6. Two patients had two right orifices. In green, there are the most used devices. So I think it's the most important number that we sure that we close the BSDs. Uh, in this slide, uh, we compare the right orifice and right diameter of the waist. That I've seen your road, uh, Rao, is similar to your road. Uh, so we don't like to oversize. And if we see the left diameter, the mean of the left side in general is smaller than the, uh, it, this is the waist, and it's smaller than the real VSD. So it's not necessary to oversize because we have elastics who helps to, uh, to, who helps to the end of the lysation and to close the VSD. In our follow-up, we analyzed residual shunt, AB block, hemolysis, dislodgement of the device, and insu uh, tricuspid insufficiency. The mean of follow-up was uh, 19 months. Two patients were lost at follow-up, 22 cases under 12 months follow-up, and one patient has uh, three years follow-up. In uh, our follow-up, uh, we could see in immediate time uh, 11 patients with a residual, minimal residual chance. Always minimal residual chance or trivial residual chance. Uh, and uh, only one patient is a post-surgical with the Gervode disease. Uh, he is waiting for a new procedure. Uh, with the, uh, he has, it's a patient who has a... Uh, two years follow-up, and is waiting for a new procedure. And we just, we didn't see AB block, hemolysis, new lodgement, but two patients developed mild tricuspid insufficiency, and we thought this the, the right this with a long hub. Perhaps it, it, it may be possible, it possible to be the problem with this device. Under 10 kilograms, these are all the patients under nine months. You can see only one patient, eight kilograms, all of them under eight kilograms. And five patients under five kilograms, if you see here. All of them were mild muscular BST. And under 10 kilograms, we can see the associations. For example, double older that ventricle with subaortic is a BST, but he has associated a mid muscular BST. The surgeon asked to us, to close the mid-muscular VSD. We had two patients with the oricortation. These patients had a stenosis of the aortic valve. And these are the catheterization data. Uh, all of them have severe hep pulmonary hypertension in the second case could moderate. All of them, the QPKs were severe and uh, we think that the, the better device for this type of cases is 10-8. This is the reason why the seven case um, was failed and the patient went to surgery. 
<clears throat> and in that type of case, we suggest to avoid the artery puncture and always try, uh, or try to, to do the venovenous loop or transeptal anterioridized loop. Uh, and the immediate result, except the seven case, all of them had total occlusion. And, uh, and midterm uh, follow-up, we can see only the complications of the associations instead of the uh, BSD. I want to show you some cases. These patients, uh, age one years old, we can see the perimembranous BSD, the echo, and with the color. The device used with 64 retrograde approach. The moment that we deliver the device, the control with no residual shunt and the echo control with no residual shunt. In the same procedure, the patient had a PDA that we close it. So if you see perfect uh, results in the echo without, uh, with the, the sending order totally free. As this was our first PDA, perhaps in, that, in this moment, I uh, would close the PDA with a small device. Another patient with a mid-ventricular BSD, if you see here the echo, And the left orifice was uh, six millimeters, the right with uh, three millimeters. We used 9.7, was the second or third case, perhaps in the at the beginning we oversized. And the control without uh, residual shunt. Under 10 kilograms, I show you the WR right ventricle. With a, we didn't begin with a heavy procedure. And now, in this space, uh, we did the venovenous loops with the jugular vein. We advanced the device uh, to the, the left ventricle. We left the guide wire, trying to cover the guide wire with a catheter and here, we can see the deployment of the, dev of the device. This is the device in the correct position. And this patient was treated 15 days uh, after procedure with good result. Uh, this patient uh, was done for Liliana Ferrin in Corrientes, Argentina. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the, the echo. It's in the outlet BSD, muscular in the outlet BSD. And if you can see the uh, device in, it seems free in the, in, in the left cavity. But the procedure finish, finished with total occlusion. In the patient is uh, without residual shunt in this moment. Uh, finally, uh, I want to show you uh, this, uh, this patient who for us was very important. A patient with severe aortic stenosis with aortic quotation, PDA, and ASD. If you can see, the patient uh, was treated uh, the aortic quotation, and after that, we closed the BSD. You can see the BSD is a big size, the BSD. We used the transeptal antebrade. The positioning of the device was correct. The, the number was 10.8. And here you have the control by echo, and you have here the control by angiogram. 
This is the patient two years uh, after procedure. As I sing opera, it's true he is singing me. Uh, listen to me, sorry. The, uh, our experience was uh, published uh, last December in this uh, uh, journal. And finally, I want to show you uh, the, another pathology that we have been used, PDA, collateral vessels, and in Fontaine, uh, we fenestra uh, occlude fenestration and uh, right ventricular outflow tract occlusion. Finally, MFO is a good option to close VSDs. It allows anterograde or retrograde approach depending on the VSD as anatomy. MFO allows closed VSD in low weight infants and the versatility allows to treat different pathologies. Thank you for your attention. Wow. So this is wow, um, Dr. Damsky, uh, especially for the, for the baby with a very huge muscular VSD. And that's yes. very useful that you use the, the you know the septal uh, way to go retrogradely. Uh, thanks for sharing this. So, um, any questions um, from um, Nageshwa? Any questions? Uh, I think it's a great series and uh, great cases to be honest with you. You have performed in the small babies, and also you used the uh, right ventricular side and retrograde antigate all methods with wonderful results. I do agree with you, some of the indications you specified that uh, uh, arterial approach is better in some selected mm. cases. Yeah. So just, just, just a question, um, that, uh, Professor Damsey, if you can share, because uh, you, in your series you have two cases with um, TR, right? Because of the yeah. disc. So um, in your opinion, uh, how can we avoid that? Or if we can improve like uh, TR, uh, 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 incident of TR after using this device. Uh, what is your opinion to 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 avoid mm. that TR? Yes, we have, we have four patients. Mm. Uh, we have to separate the device with the Berman balloon. Mm. Yes, uh, and one another aspect is uh, the retrograde approach. Uh, we slowly were. Uh, we open slowly the device, trying to avoid the tricuspid valve that is very near in perimembranous VSDs. This was the, the manoeuvre that we did. Yes? Mm. Thank uh, you. Yeah. For two reasons. Uh, the the retrograde approach is possible. Um, I talked with a company, perhaps, it's necessary, it's necessary to have a smaller right disc mm -hmm. or smaller hub, right mm -hmm. hub. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Um, Nakeshwa Mario or um, um, any other um, um, uh, speaker, uh, you can share with us um, what do you think about smaller discs on the right side? Well, I don't know. I think the, the interesting characteristic of the device is that uh, you can attach the delivery cable from both sides, anterior and venous. So that's a great advantage. Uh, I have a small experience so far by using this device, but I'll show one example, a couple of examples where uh, the advantage or disadvantage of uh, using uh, anterograde versus mm. retrograde approach uh, was evident in my experience, yeah. Well, uh -huh. about the, the, the size of the disc, uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I have a, just a small experience. We, we started on only a few months ago, mm, but mm. Uh, I found the flexibility of the device very, very nice. I mean, uh, it's compatible with uh, a lot of uh, oh different morphologies and sizes of the difference. That's a great advantage that I discovered Thank using you. this device. Thank you. Dr. Viralio, if you can share with us. Yeah, uh, just like what Dr. Carminati said, uh, we noted in our study in uh, compare, comparison of retrograde and antegrade, we have much cases TR for antegrade technique mm -hmm. as compared to the retrograde, yeah. almost none for mm -hmm. the retrograde technique. Yeah. Uh-huh, interesting. Yeah, uh, just to share with you also, like Dr. Viralo said, if, if I worry about TR, 
I probably would start with a better grade approach yes. and open the disc on the right side and pull it back because that's the only way that we can say exactly how does it look, uh, you know, uh, in order to, uh, you know, about the TR. Uh, and, and that's uh, likely for me, it, uh, it is a, it's a usable uh, idea. Thank you. So let me, let me just um, continue um, this session. So again, um, this is my honor, <laughs> honestly, um, you know, um, having a chance to introduce um, a great mentor uh, for us, for all of us, I think, um, uh, Dr. Mario Caminati, um, you know, everyone knows him. And, you know, I, every time that I have a chance to listen to his talk or uh, like see he doing a live case, uh, you know, that changed my idea and my, um, you know, point of view all the times. So uh, um, thank you very much indeed that we have um, Dr. Mario Caminati today. Uh, so he's going to share with us um, Konai Mefaku, the experience in Italy. Please, Mario. All right. Thank you all. You thank you very screen, much. Sir. Yeah. Sorry. Can you see my screen now? Not yet, sir. We can see your face and your now? office. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Right. It's coming. Now okay. your screen. Yeah. So thank you very much. So uh, as mentioned before, uh, this device can be used in, in several occasions, several diseases, but obviously we will focus only on the VSD. And uh, well, uh, the inventor already explained the characteristic of this device, there's no need to repeat them. The, the only uh, characteristic we have to take into account that the smallest size has no membrane inside, while the largest size has a membrane that probably uh, get the potential of uh, closure rate quicker as compared to the, the smaller device. But uh, all the, 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 the devices uh, in all sizes are very, very effective. Well, I don't uh, want to spend time to illustrate the characteristics that are uh, uh, very clearly shown to you, just to uh, uh, show you and uh, share with you some cases that uh, we experience. Uh, one of the most important points in closing perimembranous VSDs is obviously the avoiding or reducing the risk of AD block. That was the main drawback of perimembranous VSD closure in the past. And the flexibility and low profile uh, allows to use this device also in small kits. So the flexibility and particularly the, the possibility of uh, uh, having the chance to uh, attach the delivery cable from both sides is a major advantage of this device. Our small experience uh, is uh, 10 cases. We started only in March 2019 up to the end of uh, 19 and of January 2010. So only 10 uh, patients with uh, a, a wide range of age from three years to 58 years. The type of VSD we uh, approach was perimembranous in seven, high muscular in one, or residual for surgery in two. And I'll show you some uh, examples. That's a transesophageal echo of the typical perimembranous VSD in a seven years old boy with 30 kilo babies. That's the measurements taken from uh, transesophageal echo, and that's the angiogram, the LV angiogram showing the typical perimembranous VSD with uh, some kind of conical shape. Well, in this case, we adopted a venous success, entering the, the VSD from the left side, advancing an exchange wire to the right side, and making an arterovenous circuit and advancing the sheet from the femoral vein. And you may see here the sheet advance up to the aorta, and you may notice a guide wire left inside. That's the, something that I like to, to do sometimes, uh, quite often actually. That's a safety wire, O14 wire, just to keep the circuit, just in case uh, when catheter and sheet manipulation, you lose the position, 
you still have the circuit in place. So you don't have to start all over again and you can easily readjust the entire system in the desired position. So that's the 10.8 uh, device left in place, then released. Of course, before releasing, you take the safety wire out and you release the device. And uh, this is the uh, immediate result with complete closure, no aortic regurgitation, very nicely sitting device, and as confirmed as well by transfers of a GLA. Uh, the short axis and long axis view are the two most important uh, pictures from uh, TOE to assess the device position and the uh, uh, absence of residual shunt, a well functioning aortic and tricuspid. That's another patient with uh, perimemorous VSD, as you see here. While well, the 3D reconstruction that may be nice and helpful in understanding even better, the uh, elliptical shape of the defect as shown in clearly in this case. Well, that's the angiogram, of course. And uh, in this case, we uh, decided to approach from the aortic, from the arterial side. So VSDs enter uh, usually easily by a right jackins or a cut pigtail and a floppy wire. And uh, then over an exchange wire, the delivery sheet is advanced directly from the arterial side through the defect in the right ventricular body and the device deployed directly from the aorta. And uh, this is the echo appearance during device deployment. You can assess very, very nicely the position of the device. And if you're happy, you release the device and that's the immediate result. You see the device is very, very close to the aortic leaflet, but without interfering at all with the deep. It's a, a, an interesting case, an adult with a residual BSD after AV septal defect repair performed many years ago. And as you see very, very clearly from transit of a GL echo, the defect was actually a left ventricle to right atrial communication. A device was implanted by venous approach, as you see here, with the AV circuit, safety wire, etc. And that's the immediate result with a perfectly closed pole, no uh, residual defect, and no tricuspid regurgitation. That's another case with perimembranous VSD, 14 kilo baby, three years old, with a moderate sized VSD, with measurements then, that's the LV angiogram. Well, in this case, we enter the VSD directly from the venous side without uh, an AV circuit. We advance the delivery sheet, the delivery system from the femoral vein and uh, uh, apparently, the, the course of the sheet it was smooth. However, the transit of, well, as you see here, the device was implanted, and uh, here the immediate result again with perfect closure immediately, as seen by Angel and by transit of Fagia Nico. This is an adult case with a pretty large. <coughs> remember of VSDs, that uh, we experience a problem in this case. Uh, we experience an inadvertent detachment of the device, even before implanting it, with embolization of the pulmonary artery and blood. This is a complication not to get to the device itself. But it's nice to see how easy it was to advance a long sheet up to main PA, snare the device, uh, with uh, a gooseneck snare and uh, very, very easy retrieve the device into the long sheet advance in the main, main PA with no problem at all. Well, this is another case with uh, residual defect after surgery, surgical repair of the trilogy of follow. Well, in this case also, we decided first to approach the defect from the venous, but as you see here, there was a significant tricuspid regurgitation due to 
impingement or interference with the wire and the sheath with the tricuspid subvalvular apparatus. And this is a, a pretty important information we can get from transesophageal echomonitor. So we decided to stop the procedure for the venous approach and uh, decided to implant the device from arterial approach. As you see here, the device is uh, gradually, slowly deployed. That was a, a very large device, the 14, 12. You see the device which is uh, uh, slowly deployed, then a check angiogram and uh, monitoring by uh, echo as well. And eventually the device is released from the delivery cable. And you see here the perfect result, complete closure and no aortic regurgitation at all, in spite of the fact that it was a large device directly implanted for the aorta. And uh, so avoiding the interference with the tricuspid survival apparatus that may happen by using the venous of proximal risk. And that's the perfect result obtained by, uh, confirmed by transesophageal echo. So in our experience, we use uh, these devices, most commonly the 9.7 and 10.8 device. We use a venous approach in six, with AV loop in four, the anterior approach in four. And we had complete closure with no complication at all in nine out of 10. We have one complication and I show you the embolization of, because of inadvertent detachment and a device that was uh, easily retrieved. So in conclusion, this corner VSD occluded proved to be very effective for closing VSDs of different morphologies with excellent immediate closure rate. Venous or arterial implant is possible. The only case of embolization was not related to the device itself, but just to technically uh, uh, certainly avoidable problem with no other complications such as like aspirin regurgs, aortic regurgs, or heavy block. And TOE is uh, very helpful, at least in my experience, and I recommend to use that. So, venous arterial approach is possible. The arterial approach is a uh, quicker and easier, and uh, the question is, arterial approach can potentially be applicable, even in small patient, by using carotid access, maybe, if you want to avoid the risk of uh, the uh, arterial complication in small kids. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you much indeed, sir. Thank you. It's very, very useful idea of using the safety wire. So I, I think that I'll, I'll try to use that too next time, especially when we have a difficulty on crossing or whatsoever. So, so Mario, maybe I, I have a question. Because, because um, in the early, early year of using the, the Amplus uh, PMVSD device, I think you, you are one of the most experienced uh, person having uh, used this, defect, uh, this device and got a problem with the, with the heart block. So in your opinion, why, why this um, uh, MFO device has, at least in your experience, 10 cases, doesn't have any heart block? So what is the reason why, in your opinion? So I, I think it's very, very promising because uh, the device is uh, soft enough. The mm -hmm. uh, intermediate, between the two discs, you have uh, uh, the coronal uh, uh, middle, portion that can adapt to the anatomy of the defect nicely and that was a bright idea and I think this is the key point of uh, reducing the risk of heavy blood because the, uh, the stress that uh, the, the radial force of the device is markedly reduced by the shape of the device. Mm. So I, I appreciated that very very much and I wish congratulate Nageshwara for uh, is designing brightly this device. Very, very nice. Uh, Varakan, if you yeah. allow me, I would like to just uh, give a comment. Please. <laughs> I, I think uh, you said that you have only 10 cases experience, but you have shown all variants in that. 
you produced anti grade retrograde post operative everything phenomenally great and body wire technique i okay. think uh, i i agree with you that retrograde technique when you pull the device the tendency of tricuspid regurgitation or rvot obstructions are less because they were actually aligning towards the right ventricular side of the interventricular septum and your body wire technique is a phenomenally great when you feel that it is unstable sheet when you are putting iota so i just want to uh, actually comment on that and we are still learning from you you are a master in that oh thank you thank you nageshwar thank you uh, mario i just have a, a quick question it's good to see you again uh with with the body wire that you use is that an 014 wire and do you have to upsize your sheath when you have that wire or have you had no difficulties with just using the sheath they recommend for the device well actually by using a 1 uh, 14 uh, wire is not necessary to to uh, upsize very much the sheath but you can do that i try to you upsize one french but by using the venous approach it is not a big deal i mean by using a 5 french or 6 french is not a big deal actually. yeah um that's a question from the audience uh, mario uh, yes. the first one uh, do you recommend any specific long sheath for muscular vsd actually from adam <laughs> well, that's a very that's a very good question well uh, the ideal sheet should be well kink resistant that's the most important point and uh, according to the size of the delivery cable and uh, and the device the lumen should be as large as possible that's very obvious but i think the most important characteristic should be the kink resistance of the device or mm. the sheet mm. Thanks, what do you think guys do you well, agree with that yeah i do agree with you uh, i absolutely agree that the kinky resistant uh, braided sheet uh, for small babies anl sheet is available from cooks that the curve is very good like a jetkins right coronary cath uh, catheter so uh, kinky resistant braided sheet which can take the largest uh, sizes around the six french sheet should be okay i yeah. adam from poland versa my friend he is asking that the question the answer we all uh, you know use the kink resistant braided sheets yeah thank you mario um so let me um continue uh, this session um so for the last speaker of this session uh, number 1 uh, i would like to introduce dr juan antonio villario from philippines so he's actually uh, the pioneer of uh, doing the mfo device closure uh, in um uh, philippines uh, so um if i understand correctly he he did that since 2014 so um he can give a talk on the vsc closure in less than 10 kilo using cone mf occluder please um dr villario thank you thank you Oh, while he's repairing the, the slide so welcome dr tomita and also uh, adam kolesnik dr tomita from japan and adam from uh, from poland mm -hmm. and also daniel <laughs> nice <laughs> <to> seeing you <laughs> yes yeah, same work and good to see you guys good to see you. thanks for joining us pleasure uh good evening okay uh thank you very much for inviting me uh on this talk especially to the life tech uh, family and uh being uh be able to share uh, our experience uh in our institution so my topic is about transcatheter vsd closure in less than 10 kg using conar mf so i'm dr villarreal from philippine heart center so here are my disclosure So I will present uh, some of our preliminary outcome in closing VSD in less than 10 kg and uh, we'll present uh, interesting cases along the way.
So uh, this slide shows the increasing trend of uh, percutaneous closure of VSD in our institution from 2010 and up to 2019. We started our MFO clinical trial during 2014 and until now we have no uh, episode or uh, presence of complete heart block. So from this uh, VSD closure cases, we're able to publish researches in our institution comparing clinical outcome of uh, VSD closure using anti-grade and retrograde approaches. And uh, the second one is comparing the outcome of uh, transcatheter against surgical closure. So this is our latest research, initial outcome of percutaneous transcatheter device closure in infants less than 10 kilograms. The study started last December 2019 until April 2020 with 10 subjects. The results revealed good outcome with no device embolization. There were no uh, heart block. Complete closure were noted in all subjects. And the uh, mean hospital stay of 3.6 plus 0 0.69 days. And all of these patients underwent under GA with extubation within 12 to 24 hours. So this table shows demographic profile of the studied group. The results indicate that majority of the subjects are aged 13 to 23 months or less than two years of age, while the minority is, a, is a more than two years old. In terms of the gender, it shows that the majority were female, which is about 60% of the population. And for the actual weight in kilograms, 70% weigh more than six kilograms with a weight range of 4.9 to 10 kilograms in this study group. Majority of them are, were classified underweight in terms of weight for age. Pre-procedural echocardiographic parameters of the study group are presented in this table. Based on the results, all patients had perimembranous VSD. The mean size of the VSD defect is about 0 0.47 centimeter with a range of 0 0.3 to 0 0.7. The mean QPQS was 2.33. The left ventricular end diastolic dimension was 3.16 with a range of 2.4 to 3.5. In terms of pulmonary artery pressure, 30% had normal PAP, 30% had mild, 20% had moderate, and 20% had severe pulmonary arterial hypertension. So this table represents the intraprocedural characteristic of the studied group based on the angiographic findings. So based on the result, majority of the patients had perimembranous type, but on further interrogation, two of its uh, perimembranous noted to be subpulmonic. All patients on this study were closed using Conor MFO. The device size were from 6.4 to 10.8 using a delivery sheet ranging from four French to seven French. The frequently used technique for this procedure was retrograde, which is about 70%, while three had anti-grade approaches, which is secondary to larger device that require more than French 5 delivery sheet. The mean VSD defect seen on angiogram images are comparable to the echocardiographic size of about 0 0.43 with a range of 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. This table shows the post-procedural echo. 90% of the studied patient had no residual chance. On the other hand, one of the patient who was seen to be subpulmonic had residual, but eventually it completely occluded within a month. The left ventricular and diastolic diameter shows improvement with a mean of 2.93 centimeter from its initial mean of 3.16. Likewise, the pulmonary artery pressure improved wherein seven out of 10 patients have normal pulmonary pressure. Two patients have mild and one patient had moderate. This table shows there were no serious and major adverse events like complete heart block in the study population. Minor adverse events were minimal like procedural blood loss requiring transfusion and one residual shunt that improved after a month. This table shows the comparison of three parameters before and after transcatheter closure of the VSD. Paired T-test was done to test and determine if the mean difference between these two groups is statistically significant. It was observed that the weight 
the pulmonary artery pressure and the left ventricular and diastolic dimension showed significant difference from the pre-procedural values to post-procedural result with a T-value of 0 0.0089, 0 0.0202, and 0 0.0455 respectively. This table also shows that there was a 16.53 increase in the weight of the patient after a month and a 33.16 and 7.37% decrease in the pulmonary artery pressure and the LVEDD respectively on their follow-up echocardiogram. Techniques for our BSD closure in less than 10, so all infants were given or under general anesthesia. Imaging of the lesion were through transthoracic view, fluoroscopic and angiographic images. We access both arterial and venous routes. After arterial and venous access, we gave heparin for anticoagulation. We check ACTs and maintaining it between 200 to 300 seconds during the whole procedure. We also do quick hemodynamic study and LV angiogram at the LAO cranial angulation. We do serial measurements just to be sure of the size of the defect before crossing and after the delivery sheet is properly positioned. Device selection depends on the size of the defect, the anatomy, and the availability of the occluder. So here are some of the cases that we did in our center. So this is patient one, a case of one-year-old infant with symptom of recurrent infection and failure. Diagnosed VSD, perimembranous, four to five millimeter with size, was closed antigradely using a French uh, pipe delivery sheet. We also uh, used the MFO 86 millimeter, and there was no valvular leak noted after the closure. The LVED prior to closure was 3.2 and uh, significantly decreased uh, to post-LVED post of 2.7 centimeter. So patient number two, age 14 months, uh, with a weight of 4.9 kilogram, the LVED revealed 2.8 centimeter, which is more than normal for age. Diagnosed large VSD mem perimembranous, measuring about uh, 5 millimeter in size with PDA Krechenko type A, measuring 3 to 4 millimeter. The pre-procedural PA pressure revealed severe uh, of about 68 millimeter uh, mercury by PAP. The VSD and the PDA were closed with two conar MF86 using a one French four delivery sheet in a retrograde approach. There was minimal residual shunt across the VSD, but after 24 hours, the shunt disappeared. There was significant improvement in the PA pressure and the LVED dimension of the heart. So this is patient number three. This is a case of a 10, uh, 10-month-old infant weighing 6.5 kilogram with an inlet type of VSD measuring about 4 millimeter in size. The defect was crossed with an O32 long hydrophilic wire with its tip anchored to the distal tip of the left pulmonary artery. The wire was struck with a French 4 delivery sheet leaving its tip to the right ventricular the VSD was closed uh, retrogradely using an MFO 75 millimeter, uh, but later inverted uh, due to AI. The RVD of the occluder is on the LD. Multiple angiograms were done to check the leaks and obstruction. After interrogation with minimal leak, the device was released from the cable. So this is patient eight, one year old female uh, who weighs 10 kilograms with a BSD uh, perimembranous measuring four millimeter and a secundum ASD of six millimeter. Transthoracic echo uh, revealed uh, a six millimeter secundum. The VSD was closed using a corner MFO 75 and an ASD closed by a device uh, uh, which is available, which is 10 millimeter. 
this patient number 11 was not included in the study, but this is our latest procedure before the pandemic arise. This is a four-month-old infant with a weight of five kilogram, diagnosed with perimembranous VSD, four millimeter, with pulmonary valvular stenosis moderate. We initially dilate the pulmonary valve first using a TMP pad, 12 millimeter, and proceed closing the VSD using an MFO 75 millimeter anti-grade So we also use the what Dr. Car Mario Carminati, the body wire technique. So, uh, in conclusion, in, in less than 10 kilograms, uh, closure may be difficult and challenging, but armed with new devices like Connor MFO and a small French for delivery sheet will give uh, leverage to the operator. Proper patient selection and operator experience are of equal and utmost importance in order to achieve a successful outcome. Thank you. Hey. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Dr. Villario. Um, so, may, may I have a question? Um, actually, the question is from our audience. Uh, what is relation weight and the device size? Uh, if I understand correctly, it means that in maybe in what circumstance of the ways that you're gonna, you're gonna, you won't do the procedure or something like that? Uh, there, the criteria will always be the same. Uh, Never close the VSD with uh, less than three millimeter uh, rim, uh, fr less than three millimeter rim from the aortic valve. So uh, even the defect is large, you can do the ret the anti grade technique because you can uh, be able to give the largest uh, delivery sheet that which is available for uh, fourteen twelve, which is six or seven, but. Mm. Uh, the problem rise again when you you when you put the the device which is almost uh, having an aortic is insufficiency secondary to less uh, rim from the BSD into the aortic cast. That's that's the main problem always uh, uh, mm. during closing the BSD. Mm. Can I ask you a question? Your subpulmonic BSD using the MFO the other way around. Yeah. I just want to ask Nagis as well to comment whether it's a nice way, good way to put it that way. Of course, they're using the this to support the aortic calves. Yeah. Is it a, a, a good advice, uh, Nagis? What do you think? Yeah. Uh, to, to be honest with you, subpulmonic VSTs, we have our institutional policy to send to the uh, surgeon because of the interference of the invariable interference of the aortic valve even pfm coil also will have that we are just concerned with the long term data if long term data comes and convincing that it is not going to harm probably that time we will embark on that till that time i feel that it is uh, really i won't say absolute contraindicated relatively contraindicated from our side because I have seen a lot of centers in our Asia Pacific region being closed using various type of devices. In my experience, we did uh, three subpulmonic using uh, the inverted technique. So uh, I, we have no obstruction on the RVOT. We have no AI. So I think we have a good uh, longer outcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, may I make a comment on, the, on this topic? I, I'm Please, always Mario. surprised about this, the closing the subarterial VSDs by the device because, uh, well, in uh, Western countries, uh, it's relatively rare to have uh, this kind of defect, which is very much more common in Eastern countries. So, and and uh, traditionally, we were convinced that uh, the incidence of aortic regurgitation uh, is... Uh, something to be taken into account that we, we still uh, tend to send this patient to surgery but uh, I, I was listening many talks from you guys with uh, reporting very good results so uh, it, it is intriguing for me more and more so I, I feel myself more and more motivated to put the device in also in this kind of deal. Thank mm. you for sharing your experience. 
Thank you, also. Thank you. Thank you. So, Nageshwar, I may hand over yeah. um, the session uh, for you to moderate.